So just down there, I don't know if you can see it, the place with the white lights and a sort of a stripe at the boat halfway up there and the shorter, that's uh, King George Station. I think the kid died that was uh, pulled out there. He was knifed on the bus and um, the ambulance and everything, they were just right outside uh, Coast Capital, right there. Should I walk over there? Okay, I'll show you the spot. So you'll see on the CTV uh, footage that they're right outside this build, building, uh, Concord Place, right here, standing right outside there. Pretty sure that kid died. White redhead kid, looked like a nice kid to me. I, sh I shouldn't be too uh, insistent on uh, his mortality because that, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Unfortunately. And another guy died. They're, I think they're suggesting that it was a terrorist attack just up the street here on uh, Fraser Highway. Just up here, a couple of stops, and then uh, left maybe another five minutes. And the weird one with that is, so I was, we were on the bus, we went by it. We went by it, and the cops there with the yellow tape. And uh, there was a shooting, and there was yellow tape around the restaurant, and then I go home, and there it is on the news, there was a shooting. Uh, so that's two. Three. That's three. I can count. Three. So the fourth stabbing happened here at Surrey Central, which is, as you can see, quite close to King George Station. Right? And this is in the last week. There was a stabbing here, and there was another stabbing. I blew that completely. I should do this again. I, I blew that completely. I chopped off the top of the... I'll just cut it out. This doesn't make any difference. Uh, that's the Civic Hotel and that's uh, Surrey Central. So there was like in the life thing, it's the last three days. One here and I think I can get a decent one, just have to look at it when I'm filming. Sometimes it's a bit tough to talk and uh, look at what you're filming. Shouldn't be if you just had to, if you're just focusing on those two things. A little distracting here though because there's a lot of traffic. And some pretty shady looking characters. Some guys have a really tough time with luck in life. But the one thing, you know, about uh, heroin addicts that you can uh, be sure of right now is they are so unbelievably stoned on heroin, probably more than many people that have ever lived. With the fentanyl crisis, it's really stronger. So if you wanted to buy that much heroin, not many people could have afforded it. You got this really cheap thing and it's super strong. So we're doing an experiment getting people as stoned as they are on the drugs that are available now. No question about that. Absolutely no question about that. If, if some of them for some reason had to uh, go through a withdrawal, well, they don't even want to dream about it. It would literally, I think, be kind of like being on fire for one thing. That's for one thing. And uh, spiritually and psychologically and emotionally at the same time. It's, it's not something that uh, you want to think about. It's not, a, it's not something that even should be possible. Like, why, are, why do we have suddenly all these people that need to get so stoned out of their head, right? This makes no sense. There's no uh, perspective. And... There's a stabbing there. There's a stabbing behind me. There was a stabbing up around the corner, not that far. There was a stabbing off to my uh, left behind me, about five kilometers away, uh, but uh, rode past it. You know, kind of brings it home when you ride past it. In both cases, I thought that there was, uh, it was some sort of a traffic accident because there was nothing around. There was just ribbons. That's all I saw. I didn't see cops or anything. They were long gone. Yeah, so I just thought, you know, there'd been an accident and they needed to pick up car parts or something like that. I didn't, I didn't think, take either one of them seriously at all. 
Guess I'll start doing that now. No. Okay, let's see if we can do this better this time. Here we go. So there's a guy over here, you know, uh, they look like they're like, um, they've all got uh, some sort of really serious back issue. They're like just, they're like curled up into a C. Their, their body's in the shape of a C a lot of the time. Like, the, the thing is, is that this is a massive ex experiment that's being done and it's a massive e experiment that we can observe in real time and it is nutty I hope it was uh, well I certainly hope that there was that nobody can uh, pin any sort of a, a racial uh, motive for it uh, if it doesn't exist it better not be mentioned it better not be put forward that there was you've got to be very careful about that what I'm saying is that if you're gonna say that there was a racial element to this and you're wrong, then you made a big mistake. You made a big mistake. And that goes for everybody, absolutely everybody. And there are people, I've seen people try to manipulate that kind of thing to uh, stir up racial animosity and profit off of it. Absolute scumbags, absolute scumbags. It's the lax bail policy. Everybody knows. The thing about the Chinese, you know, investment and all that money pouring in to influence our elections, it's an open secret in the Chinese community. Everybody in, in Toronto knows that. How could you not know it? They were like threatening ki to have kids' uh, student visas revoked. How can you do that and keep it secret? They didn't keep it secret. Like, that's how much of an insult it was. They just splashed it right in our face. The consulate in Vancouver was bragging about it. Ha, ha, ha. See, I did it. I got rid of this other really good guy. Chill, he's, he's a conservative guy and he's nice. You'd like him. Like, that's what that's something I've really enjoyed is to see some of the really, really good Chinese people coming out because it takes a lot of guts to speak back to this right now. Especially if you're Chinese and involved in that society and everything. 